Look, funnily enough, we'd already planned this before I decided to get into this taxpayer union story on, well, the co-governance on speed. Because co-governance has been and is still an issue for many New Zealanders. Um, and a group set up in Northland that we've covered who've had their problems and they're setting up a kind of lobby group called Stop Co-Governance quite specifically on this issue. And Stop, Go Gov- Stop Co-Governance had a run in, um, with a venue, a publicly owned venue in Whangarei that I'd like to think we helped them out on. We highlighted it and they finally got to use that venue and they have been running a series of public meetings around the country um, or sp- and particularly up north. Um, I think the latest one was in our special weather location, Dargaville. Um, the leader of this group is Julian Batchelor. And we thought we'd check in to see with Julian to see how Stop Co-Governance, his campaign, is going and what sort of headwinds he might be running into. Hey, Julian, nice to have you uh, on the platform again. Welcome to the program. Sean, thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to this. All right. Now, since you got your venue in Whangarei and had your meeting, how many other meetings have you had, public meetings have you had? Uh, we've had uh, one uh, a meeting with um, Indagable, yep. and then we've had another one in uh, Kerikeri just uh, two nights ago, and they were absolutely fantastic. And now we're really ramping up because we're heading down the country into, um, we've got Waipu, we've got uh, Mangawai, we've got uh, Mount Eden, we've got St. Heliers, and then we're off down to Hamilton. Um, oh, you are getting south Tarot. of the Bombay Hills, that's good to hear. Yeah, but we, so the trouble we've got is that we've got invitations coming from people um, all over Northland to stick around here and keep talking, just stay. Like yeah. our meeting in, in Kerikeri, we had 200 there. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and it was fantastic. There was the, the, it's growing. It's like a wave coming in uh, from yeah. the ocean. It's building. All right, Julian, have you concentrated? Are you looking at this new issue, the Resource Management Act changes and just how much code governance is enshrined in that proposed legislation? It's all, it's all through it, and it's the worst possible thing. If you want to have Māori controlling the country, that's, this is what you do. You sign, you sign up to the RMA. The RMA is absolutely marinating in Māori control of everything that goes on in, in New Zealand with respect to resource management. It's a disaster. Listen, i tell you what happened to my property. I cleared a piece of land the size of two tennis courts. It just had scrub on it. It was just tea tree. I, I got charged by the... And it was no excavation was done. I got charged $17,000 by the council. For what? And most of that, most of that for clearing the land uh, because most of that was uh, having to deal with Maori writing into the council saying they didn't want me to chop down tea tree because it was sacred uh, wood, sacred uh, plants, and uh, there was all this correspondence at $170 an hour, and I have to pay for it. And so Maori got it, clicked onto this, and they went, "Oh, this is this is kind of good. We can actually screw Julian Bachelor over by writing to the council because the person in charge of my my uh, resource consent." had to answer all those letters at $170 an hour. So Murray can think, oh, if we can flood the council with letters, they've got to answer them all, his price goes up. And so this is what's going on. Did they come to you, did they come to you, Julian, and say, if you just flick us five grand, we're all sweet? I've had had a a, a bribery and corruption going on here. I've had uh, people with my property in the Bay of Islands, somebody come up and say, if you don't give us your land, we're going to burn your house down. So it's it's not not very subtle, is it? Have you gone and, to the police about um, that? You would, wouldn't you, Julian? Yes, yes, I have. In fact, I I recorded the call. It went to the police, and the police dismissed it. You know why? Why? Because they said the person who came to my property with that, and it was about a forty minute conversation. They didn't say directly, "I am going to burn your house down." They said, "We are going to burn your house down," and they couldn't do anything because they didn't oh. have those crucial words, which was. Yep. I am going to burn it down. They said, we are, and they said, we can't take it any further. So, listen, you know what? The whole country is corrupt at the moment. There's tremendous corruption going on everywhere, in the police, in the councils, yeah. uh, in the media. It, it, this, this place well, is I, I, Look, I can't that, speak to that, that, and I'm not sure, Julian, that you know everything that's going on everywhere in the country, but I do want to talk about the meetings you've had. Well attended, but has everyone been supportive or not, or have you had a bit of blowback? Oh, of course not. We've had we've had um, protesters turning up in Dargaville, protesters turning up in 
in uh, in in uh, Kerikeri. But the interesting thing is, you know, these Maori protesters, we, we've said to them, hey, we wouldn't come onto your marae and uh, trash your marae and uh, interject when people are speaking on the marae because we've got more respect than that. We're, we're educated. We're people who have um, uh, been trained to be polite, to be respectful. Why can't you do that? This is, this is our marae. Have come police on. intervened at have all? They, Has there been any violence? No violence whatsoever. It was the biggest case of misreporting. This lady, Sam Ollie, you know, she is such a propaganda minister. She might as well be... Sorry, you've, 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 just, you've jumped ahead here. Who is Sam Ollie and, and what's the reportage you're talking she's about? The, she's, she, she's, she's Radio New Zealand. And she did, she's written most of the reports. She's following And what do the like Radio New Zealand reports say? They said that, um, that uh, well, I'll just go through them. They said that the police had to break up the, 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 um, the meeting in Dargaville. They did not. I closed the meeting in, a, in, a, in, in the normal way, which said, thank you very much, everybody, for coming. The meeting's over, and uh, let's just stick around and, and talk about things together, and you can buy books, and you can... We want you to stick around and chat. There was no issues in Dargaville, but they reported it like it was a, um, you know, police with batons and shields and, and uh, all this sort of stuff. And, and what's behind that, Sean, is this, is they want to put the fear of God up, all the people who have venues in, in New Zealand, to not have us because it's dangerous. And they want to shut down free speech. Ultimately, this is a free speech issue. They're trying to shut down free speech. Have you and complained Radio to Radio New, New Zealand? Have you complained under Broadcasting I've Standards talked, Act? I've talked... No, I haven't. Not, not that far, but I've talked to, to Sam Ollie directly. This is all happening so fast. Um, and there's so much to do now with, with this because everything is booming for us. Yeah. Uh, okay, what did Sam Ollie say, this woman from RNZ, or he? Is it a he or she? She. It's a she. It's okay. a she, Samantha. Okay, yeah. Uh, and what nothing, did Sam Ollie say? She, she comes back to me and she says, I said, your, 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 your reporting was absolutely dishonest. I saw her in Kirikiri. She was there. And uh, she, she just said, oh, okay, well, what, what did I say that was dishonest? And I said, go and have a look at my blog on the 12th of the 3rd, 23, because I have listed seven things you said that were dishonest in that report yeah. that you did. Well, there and is a said, formal complaints said, procedure, Julian, you could take, and you could ring Paul Thompson, the head of Radio New Zealand. Right, I'll write his name down. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I should okay. do that. Because so, Julian, because any this, other this media, reporting. you say they're misreporting. I, I wasn't there, I, and I haven't read the reports, to be honest. Is there any other misreporting? Are, are any great legacy media outlets having a crack at you as well? Uh, we've, had, we've been on News Hub and we've been on the Otago, Otago Daily Times, but they're all inflammatory. They're all obviously working in tandem with, uh, with radical Māori, with I, elite iwi. And it's obvious that the, the media in New Zealand, like I used to think it just, you know, that it was sort of a gut feeling you had that there was a really corrupt media, but now I've got proof. Okay, what about I'm the Herald? Have they had a crack at you? Well, David Fisher was there at Kirikiri. We haven't seen his, his, uh, his article come out, but he drove all the way from Auckland to Kirikiri to do a report. So I guess that might come out today or tomorrow or sometime or in the, in the, uh, on Saturday or so. I don't know when he's going to do it, but let's see. Yeah. Guarantee it's going to be corrupt. Guarantee it's going to be not balanced. Guarantee there's going to be no quotes from people who are supporting what we're doing, just only the activists. All right. Um, so, Julian, you feel that you are being shut down because you are raising concerns about co-governance? Totally. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, look, really interesting. Please do keep in touch with us. Um, this is an issue. Um, and as we've said today, as the Taxpayers Union is saying, uh, it's not like co-governance has gone away. That is not uh, on the policy bonfire, is it? That's not on... That, I tell you what, co-governance is getting bit worse and worse and worse. It's got... It's like a, a 50 tentacles on a, on a big octopus and it's getting into everything and it's going deeper with everything. All right. Julian, I thank you for your time. Um, we must go and have a look at that RNZ stuff. Um, not surprising that legacy media have a crack at someone like Julian Batchelor. And I'm not saying I agree with every... or necessarily even believe everything he says... But he's got a right. In an open democracy, you've got a right to have unpopular views or views that aren't in the mainstream.